Okay, I would hate to to not be able to. Do you mind if I take my jacket? No, no, please make yourself at home <laughs> as much as you can. Um, Now I'm talking to you because I experienced it. And I have pictures to prove that there was a Holocaust. And I would like you to know that I greatly resent those people full of hate who deny the Holocaust, where so many proofs have been witnessed. I am in possession of a picture of General Dwight Eisenhower, Omar Bradley, and several others around the pile of burned bones in a liberated concentration camp with tears in their eyes. Now, nobody can deny that. Okay, we go to Shanghai. You would probably not recognize Shanghai as it exists today compared to former times. It has been built up by the financial successes of a communist government. It has been rebuilt to one of the most modern cities in the world and has become a major point of trade and economy. Now, Let's go back to the beginning. Uh, in the 19th century, Shanghai was uh, part of an empire ruled by, uh, by an emperor who did not particularly care for foreigners. That man wanted business, but he didn't like foreign intervention. However, he was uh, beaten badly in a war action by England, and England got concessions in many cities, as you perhaps remember Hong Kong. Shanghai was one of them. Shanghai was a point of trade on a minor scale, and the man whose empire suffered greatly, had to agree that the English helped him in their undeniable un uh, power to build up the economy of his country. So Shanghai, who was, of course, a Chinese city, was a uh, uh, by the way, involved the Chinese and Japanese in a very bad, brutal war. And uh, China, Shanghai was, was split up into several sections. One of them remained Chinese, one of them was Japanese, and one of them was the so-called international settlement and one of them was a French concession. After the revolution in Russia, many Russian Jews who were anti-communist fled and came into Shanghai. And they settled in the French concession and built up good business and their own riches of art and food etc. and it became a very prosperous part. The other part was governed by England and America called the International Settlement. And I'll stop right here because we, I would like start a little later with my arrival into that time Shanghai. As you know, uh, the uh, so-called the, the Holocaust uh, started on the 30th of January, 1933, when the man from Braunau, not a German, a Austrian, uh, 
got to the government in Germany. And at this point, I, I would like to say, you know, I am, I am a Jew, and I am proud to be a Jew. However, one cannot blame all Germans, and particularly not the sons, the generations after, for what the Nazis did. The Nazis are the criminals. Okay? Uh, it was a terrible time of change and threat, insecurity, worry, fear. You must understand you are in an age now I was when that happened. And all of a sudden you didn't know whether your parents would have enough food on the table because huge businesses were boycotted. Physicians could not practice. Uh, attorneys could not practice. Most German companies didn't hire Jews anymore. The Nazis confiscated the money of Jews, investments or money, and kept it under their control. And it was at a point where you couldn't go to a pool, you couldn't go to a theater. You weren't sure whether you were alive tomorrow because so many people were arrested and put in a concentration camp. And that all before the real killing started. It was a murderous atmosphere that created a fear and impressed all of us, I'm sure. Uh, my personality has suffered from it. Anyway, the uh, Nazis uh, l uh, issued more and more uh, regulations that uh, terminated Jewish life. Uh, you you have to understand what it does to you when you have when you know how many people were awakened at three o'clock in the morning by loud banging on the door and the Gestapo was there and arrested your father. It it was terrible. I tell you, you really didn't know whether you'd live in the evening. It was just absolutely terrible. All your friends of another religion didn't talk to you anymore. Uh, it, it was, I have spent many tears. Okay, the, the Nazis uh, burned down the German <coughs> counterpart of the uh, House of Representatives and they threw all communists in a concentration camp because they accused them of having done it. The fact is that Hermann Göring, the uh, 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 chief of the German Air Force and the uh, uh, first minister of Prussia did it, and political parties were then uh, uh, no longer permitted to operate and the entire so-called House of Representatives were all Nazis. And it got from bad to worse, and I'm sure you've heard about the Nuremberg Laws, uh, which dictated that the Jews no longer were German citizens, and we got a, uh, a cult, but we don't have enough time to show, I just hold it up here, showing J. J showed I'm a Jew, and I had my fingerprints in here. And uh, anyway, at that time, they also com uh, uh, const made it constituted a crime between if an, a, a, a relationship between the German and the Jew. Uh, no woman under the age of 45 could become an employee in a Jewish household. It was uh, dramatic. And of course, it got from bad to worse. And uh, in, in November 1938, a young Jewish uh, boy, student, in the city of Paris, France, went to the German consulate and shot 
a German officer because his parents had been murdered by the Nazis. And that was just one last uh, push for Hitler to really let us have it. Uh, most Jews were arrested. My father was arrested. Uh, they bombed and burned the synagogues, Jewish businesses, and they made it impossible for you to have, have anything to do. Yet you were, I remember my mother, and we heard that, uh, that something like this was on the way, and my mother and I went on the city railroad all night long because we were afraid that I was 17, that I might be arrested. And we came home next morning, and my mother went in from the back, and I went in from the front. Unfortunately, there was nothing wrong. My father was gone in a concentration camp in Sachsenhausen by Berlin. And he had, I don't know why, he was a typical German Jew. My father had refused to leave Germany uh, because he did not believe that the German nation could allow this to happen. And, and he paid for it. And uh, my mother went and bought tickets to the city of Shanghai. Why Shanghai? Because all the nations, including the United States and the President Franklin Roosevelt, did not take in any Jewish people that they knew were murdered and suffering. And I, I had named my son Franklin after Roosevelt, and I'm sorry I did. On the other hand, I give credit to Roosevelt because without him, you wouldn't be sitting here that Frank, that free Hitler would have taken over America. And my mother took the tickets to Shanghai to the concentration camp. She went to the commandant, and she begged the man to let my father come home, because she could back it up with the fact that my father's two brothers were fighting for Germany <coughs> in the First World War, and my father had never had any problems whatsoever. So the man let my father come home two weeks later, Christmas. He never spoke a word about that. And we prepared uh, uh, to give up our household. <laughs> My father had a pharmacy and a, and a, pharmacy, and a uh, cosmetic store, uh, and somebody got it for 400 marks, which was $100. And uh, we then went to Shanghai, China. Now I'll go back to Shanghai, China. When we arrived in Shanghai, China. Can you just say one word about your trajectory? So you went about to what? You went from Germany to Italy, right? Yeah. We and went from Germany to Munich in a in a train, German train, where we met, thanks for <laughs> reminding me, where we met a very fine gentleman who evidently was not aware I was Jewish. And he stopped he went to Munich. Our train stopped in Munich, where we had to change the train to Italy. This man took me along to the so-called Feldherrnhalle, which was a monument to the Nazis' putsch against the Bavarian government, for which Hitler was imprisoned. And he let me stand there, and I f had my pants full. I was so fearful uh, that he took me for a reason there, and he didn't. Anyway, we then went to, uh, to Italy, where we uh, uh, went aboard a ship called Giulio Cesare, Julius Caesar, and that was the last nice four weeks before we came to Shanghai. And let me tell you, Shanghai, at that time was very nice uh, on the front end and the harbor because 
some uh, Baghdad Jews who are worldwide recognized, Hardun, Sassoon, and Kaduri, who later got titles by the English Queen, they got rich with the famous opium wars, and England wanted their share of the profits, and these people helped them. These people also later on helped us tremendously. They also uh, had the biggest buildings in Shanghai. Sir Victor Sassoon died uh, just in, in the 60s. And uh, anyway, we were put onto animal trucks. And we were taken to a refugee camp that used to be a schoolhouse and had a church. We slept on the floor on straw mats, 100 people in one room with two toilets. And we were fed eggs laid by chicken that were fed fish and they tasted accordingly. I lost a lot of weight in, in these few weeks. Later on, the situation was a little bit uh, eased by getting us into other homes, also no luxury places. A great big room uh, was a shower room which you could use once a week. And the Japanese uh, had their own area of Shanghai where we rarely went. When uh, the war started, in uh, Hawaii. The Japanese, it was a Saturday night, bombed and sank all American, French, and English ships in harbor. And then they took over the entire uh, uh, area of the international settlement and the Chinese concession. And the Nazis sent to Shanghai a man by the name of Eisinger, who was known as the Beast of Warsaw, where he had killed 63,000 Jews. And he was supposed to take care of the Jews in Shanghai. Now, mind you, there were, uh, I would say, about 30, 40,000 Jews, Russian and European. And the English, the Japanese, general who was in charge of the entire area was addressed by a Japanese princess who had befriended a German Jewish doctor who immigrated early on in the 30s. The Japanese were not uh, very happy in following the Nazi example of killing the Jews. They did not treat us with gloves, but they, they didn't kill us. And this man, Eisinger, built gas chambers. He also uh, asserted himself by buying uh, old tankers totally without any facilities. And he had planned to either put us in the gas chambers or put us on the tankers and sank us in the ocean. Fortunately for us, unfortunately for innocent Japanese, the A-bombs fell and that saved our lives. I can tell you a few, do I have enough time left? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can tell you a few little stories of uh, what the Japanese did, of course, in that time. They were brutal. They put us behind barbed wires. We had to give up the places we lived and move into this section. And the Japanese controlled it, and we had to control it on the inside. And one day I was walking along the street, and a Japanese army truck uh, stopped a young boy riding a bicycle, a Jewish boy. 
threw him to the ground and took the bicycle and the boy stupidly tried to argue. They took him on the, on the truck and killed him right in front of everybody there. And this is general how Japanese treated us. They did not like us because we were foreigners, these are the Chinese. They didn't like us because we were Jews. We, they, we were called Yutaning, Pisse, which means Jewish swine. More often when we, we, we heard uh, that. Anyway, uh, I don't know uh, how much I might have left here. Uh, let me see, please. Well, when the war came, when the, the uh, war started, the Americans bombed Shanghai. I worked in a hospital, in a refugee hospital, and that refugee hospital was directly across a jail. That jail was no longer used as a jail. It was loaded with Japanese weapons. And of course the Americans knew that. And they, they bombed that thing. And we had like 150 people got killed that were in the hospital just standing because there was no basement. And uh, I, my parents still were in a refugee camp in this, this ghetto. And uh, I understand that uh, this area also was bombed. So I put on a white coat and a red cross and a rickshaw and loaded it with materials to go and help these Jewish people over there. I had to unfortunately ride through a heavily hit uh, area by American bombs, lots of people dead in the Japanese running around with machine guns and they saw a white face and I had real trouble to get through. They put on the Red Cross and I showed them that uh, these things were for hurt people. So I finally got there and I was glad I did because they absolutely had nothing. Anyway, the war years were brutal as far as food is concerned. Uh, we had uh, the ghetto was governed by a Japanese of short stature. His name was Goya. Uh, now, I have met, believe me, very nice Japanese uh, 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 after the war, and uh, very, very personable, friendly, educated people. However, some of the soldiers were extremely brutal, very much like the Nazis. Mr. Goya, uh, when somebody came in who was taller than he, he stood on the table, he hit this guy left and right, and told him, I'm the king of the Jews. He was a short man, and he punished Jews. You know, you had to have proof that you had to get out of the ghetto, like having a job, like going to a doctor or whatever, and he was very mean to people. And uh, anyway, the uh, end of uh, that came with the, with the evil. And uh, it was, I felt grateful and happy and a big stone fell out of my heart. And at the same time when I read how many Japanese got killed that couldn't be held responsible for the, for the crimes of the military power. I felt very bad. And uh, because I was employed by the American Jews, uh, 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 joint association, I got an affidavit to come to the United States, a mass affidavit of people like me. And we came on the 
marine swallow. And uh, we arrived, I think, in October in uh, San Francisco. I shed tears when I got out, like all of us, because we got we got our freedom back. Bless you. We got our freedom back. We got our life back, and we thought America was promised land. And. Uh, I am grateful to this day that I could come here. Uh, I will tell you just to, uh, I might tell you that the uh, general who, oh, I missed one thing, yeah. The general who uh, was in charge of uh, the Shanghai area, Japanese man, who had done evidently several things that he wasn't supposed to do as a human being, uh, was put on a truck uh, with his hands behind his back. I have unfortunately wit witnessed that. And he was driven through Shanghai, and at the end of his trip he was shot by the Chinese underground, which is totally understandable and it because the Chinese I have to tell you this because it is historically proven. The Chinese-Japanese war was one of the most brutal things. After the Japanese had beaten the Chinese, they killed brutally 65,000 Chinese private people. So the Chinese did not like the Japanese at that time. And uh, uh, there was another story I missed that I would like to tell you, just to tell you what we went through. All these things, you know, had an impact on you when you, I know you are young now, you are in the process of developing. Everything that happens in your life will have an impact on you. And uh, that's why I like you to, to understand what happened to us? I'm 90 years old, and I still remember uh, many of these things. Uh, there was a, an attack uh, of the Chinese underground in Hankyu, which was the place that we were, which was the ugliest part of Shanghai. Poor and ugly. You had to use pails instead of toilets. And I can't begin to, you couldn't drink the water, you had to boil it. Uh, I could tell you it was really miserable. And you know, your food, you didn't have, I weighed 95 pounds, which is uh, 100 pounds less than what I weigh now. Anyway, underground attack on a Japanese officer car. Eight Japanese officers were killed by a bomb in that car. Uh, within minutes, the entire area in which I worked at that time was surrounded by Japanese and barbed wire. And it was uh, ironically taking in the area where it was an American university, similar to this. And Everybody that was in that area at the time of this happening was pushed into the garden of that American university at 104 degrees with no shade. And after people stood there for hours, many of them collapsed. Well, anyway, the general came out and it was translated into uh, Japan into, into Chinese and, and English. He demanded that the people there turn over the people who killed these officers. Of course, he knew that nobody knew who was underground because and if you knew, you wouldn't give it to them. Well, let me tell you, 15 minutes later, he came out and said, within 15 minutes, if I don't know the names, I will take uh, 
25 pregnant women and kill them. And he did. And I shall never forget that in my life. I'm not telling you how. Uh, it was truly an impact that, that I'll never forget. Anyway, the war was over. I came to San Francisco. And I loved San Francisco. However, I couldn't stay there because I had an affidavit to come to the city of St. Paul. And I came to St. Paul. I lived in St. Paul for 50 years, and I worked very hard. I worked at two jobs and went to the university. And uh, after, I, have, I worked for armors, and I worked selling tires, and I worked as a janitor at a department store in the evening, and I slept sometimes four hours. Anyway, things worked up, and I, I had a very good job with Wyeth Laboratories, which was at that time one of the largest pharmaceutical companies in the world. They are now bought by Pfizer. And I became a salesman, and I did real well in the city of Minneapolis. So they offered me a, a job as a manager in, in Florida. Uh, I didn't take it because my wife, my first wife, had gotten sick. And uh, uh, we, we then opened up a business, my wife and I. And uh, that's uh, where this lady came in. This is my wife. Uh, she, 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 we had uh, boats, and uh, she and her husband and my wife and we uh, became friends. And she came to work for us, and she got, uh, she got a part of the business. When my wife died, she became full partner, and after that, she convinced me to marry her. <laughs> and I uh, am grateful, successful in this country, and no matter who governs it, uh, I love it, and I'm grateful to be here. And I hope I have given you an understanding. God forbid something happens in this country. So God forbid you never know what the politics are and whatever happens, you've got to be aware of the fact that people get hurt. And we got to stand up. We got to stand up for for the blacks and for the yellows and for the Jews and for each other. We got to stand up and fight back. Don't ever let don't ever let the murderers allow you to, to, to supplement them. Thank you. Okay, we have some questions. Yes, I know uh, would, would you please speak loud because besides being blind in one eye, I also can't hear. <laughs> so please ask loud. I know there is plenty of questions because the, the students actually posted them to our course website, so please voice these amazing questions. I was really impressed when I read through them last night, so please share them with, with everybody. And, um, Go ahead. Um, did you have Wait, I come over. <laughs> <laughs> speak up, Kara. Speak up. Of what it was before I got there? Yeah, Terrible. It was, uh, it was run over by the Japanese, and the Japanese had destroyed a part of the city, Hongkyu. When we got there, we rebuilt it. It was completely, and they had killed Chinese. The Japanese uh, were not real good to the Chinese people, and the Chinese people did not like the Japanese too much. However, Shanghai, for instance, you would get sicknesses because it was uh, trans, uh, sub, uh, subtropical, and you could be, I had, you have no idea how many sicknesses I had. And uh, everybody did. A lot of people died. Uh, you couldn't drink the water, and uh, it was 
truly extremely hot in the, at times between April and uh, September, and terribly lousy, cool, and wet in the winter. Not the nice place to go to for vacation. <laughs> <laughs> I, th I, I think Kara want, wanted to know, if, you know, when you heard yeah. that you were going to Shanghai, when yeah. your mother told you, we're yeah. going to Shanghai, yeah. What did you know about the oh, city? What was your initial reaction? I to never that? even heard of it. <laughs> <laughs> never even heard. That's why you know, at that time I was grateful to be able to get out of, of uh, uh, Germany, and I was very grateful that Shanghai was the only place that would allow us to come in without hesitation and. They all like England, France, and, and Germany, and, um, uh, and America, and Spain. All these countries didn't take the Jews. Shanghai did. And of course, I like that. <laughs> <laughs> Are you from China? Oh, no. I'm from Hawaii. From where? Yeah. Hawaii. Hawaii? Yeah. Hawaii? I'm, I'm going there. <laughs> <laughs> I've been there four times, so I love it. <laughs> okay, okay well, so well. some other question? Do you have a question? Yes. You? Uh, Rebecca? Oh, which university did you go to? What university? Well, uh, it was a trade school in the city of Berlin. I uh, became a, I, I worked for an English company, a perfumery company called Jablay. I know whether you've heard of uh, Jardley is a very famous perfume. And there was a law that when you became an apprentice, you had to also go to a business school. And so I went to that business school. And uh, later on, I, oh, I went to a, first to one of the most famous schools in, in Germany, was the Kassel <coughs> School. And uh, there were only two Jews there. I was one of them. It was the Berlinische Gymnasium zum Crown Kloster. I translated it. Berlinian Gymnasium to the Grey Cloister. And um, if I would have stayed there, not being Jewish, uh, at graduation I would have had two years of college. However, we were kicked out by a Nazi leader at a big meeting. Uh, who he, he was talking to the school, and he screamed, Jews out! And two little Jewish boys, 11 years old, walked out. Can you imagine the feeling I had? Uh, I tell, up to this day, when I go into his chair, I feel lousy. Okay, and then I went to Chicago to an institute for, uh, I was working for a pop company in St. Paul, and uh, I became the chief uh, of mixer, and he sent me to school over there. And I also went to the University of Minnesota and got uh, uh, real estate uh, and real estate. Were there schools uh, in Shanghai where, you know, where Jewish refugees could go? Yeah, there were Kaduri, who became titled by the, by the queen with the title of Lord. He, he built a school for the Jewish refugees and so soon uh, opened up uh, a, a lot of his private sector of buildings to keep refugees up there. Uh, they, they, these people did a lot, really. On the other hand, they were, Mr. Sassoon was, <laughs> this perhaps is, is just a little sideshow, he was very much aware of his power and of his reputation. And he went to a famous nightclub uh, in uh, Bumbling Well Road, which was the exquisite street in, in, in Shanghai international settlement, and uh, he, the place was crowded, and he couldn't get a seat. So he went across the street, bought the property, 
build up another nightclub just to put this one out of business. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Somebody the best. Um, what kind of response did you get from the Chinese people living in Shanghai? What kind of response did you get from them? They didn't like us. No. They didn't like us and they were not real helpful and uh, as I said to you before, they called us Jewish swine and uh, they, they have never liked foreigners uh, to come into their midst. They have uh, had a certain respect of a reputation of black America and England and France, but they never liked foreigners. Are you from Japan? I'm from, well, I was born in China. I was born in China. Oh. I'm one of them. Okay, who else? Questions? Mm -hmm. oh. uh, was, when you were living in Shanghai, was the language barrier like yeah. a significant part of daily life? Well, I tell you, there were 17,000 refugees living in a ghetto. Mm -hmm. Many of them from Austria many of them from Germany and Poland. And we got along with a so-called English, uh, German, or Yiddish. And uh, to the Chinese, we, we <laughs> they, they understood a little bit of the Persian language. And some of us, for instance, my sweet brother in laws they spoke Chinese perfect, and they could get anything they wanted from them. But uh, we got along somehow. Um, was it difficult to find a job? Oh my God, yes. <laughs> I, uh, I was, uh, when I got there, I was 18 years old. And I first got a job as a uh, uh, There was, I was a camp guard in a refugee camp. We, we police the refugee camp to make sure that nobody came in and, you know, at night nobody came out. And that was my first job. In fact, I saved the guy's life. I went on one Sunday morning at 5 o'clock. I went by his, his little door, and he was a tailor. And he worked on it, and he had an electric iron in his hand, and he got a shock. Water and, water and I had a little baton and I get it out of his hand and I, I think I saved his life. Okay. And she saved mine. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to thank you for so lovely sitting there and listening to me. I hope I have contributed some to your knowledge. And it gave me pleasure to see young people of a new generation that, uh, that I might have influenced. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, thank you so much, for those of you for Q and A. Coming, for joining us, and for the rest of us, I'll see you all on Thursday. Yes, so well. Finish a little earlier today. If you would really like to have a talk with us, I'll tell you what, I need it when it comes by. I can bring it. I can bring it. I can bring it. I can bring it.
I will I will scan these images yeah. and I will put them okay. on the Moodle <laughs> uh, for everybody to okay. see. But I mean, yeah, yeah. go there's, keep, there's, keep there's going. This is a shift. This is a shift that we left on to the United States after it was over. Uh -huh. So, uh, well, really, there are interesting pictures in there from the from the old uh, Jewish people that came here so soon, and the people who founded the Jewish community in Shanghai. Here's Victor Sassoon, and that's his father. And uh, here's the only old synagogue in the city of Shanghai. I was married in a, in a small synagogue, a very small synagogue. And I shouldn't have gotten married there either. <laughs> so I shouldn't have gotten married. Uh, well, anyway, do, do you put the take tea? Did that the way they lived? Uh, the, the, that was a nice one. I how many people would they have living in there? Uh, I don't know how many people in any camp. A few hundred. There were a total of about 18,000 refugees from Europe. There. Mixed up Polish, German, Austrian, Yugoslavian. You know, met all those that Hitler had picked up. And, and uh, the food was fantastic. You didn't want to eat it. <laughs> okay, I, I leave this with you. Yeah, I need yeah. it back and Sure, I'll, 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 I'll return it to you. And I like to say another word to you, and please take me serious. I was so amazed to meet your teacher, who is one of <laughs> the most charming. <laughs> <laughs> And, you know, I'm not trying to kiss his rear end. <laughs> but I, I am so pleased to see. I thought I met an old gentleman. <laughs> and, and God bless you. Thank you. Well, they wouldn't agree because they have to do homework. Yeah. Then I <laughs> <laughs> okay, then you can. Do you want to have my address? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, well, we can, you know, we can go back to my office and we'll, okay. We'll, we'll okay, fine. Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah. I wish you all well. God bless you. Thank all. you. Hey, I was just wondering, how long did you spend in Shanghai? Nine years. Nine years. Mm -hmm. Nine years. I have a daughter that was born in Shanghai, and uh, every time she mentions that, that she was born in Shanghai, people say to her, "You do look Chinese." <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for coming. Thank you so, Maybe so much for I'm afraid sometime when I visit my grandma. Sweet girl. Come sweet girl. Thank you. I love you. Me too. <laughs> and your grandma. You're great. Thank you. Thank you all. It was a pleasure meeting you. Thank 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 Thank you. Thank you. for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. so much. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. Thanks for coming. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Actually, and of course, I see you all on tomorrow, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'll send a reminder. Was it not six? I don't know. I think it was six. I'll send out a reminder. I think it was six, six to eight, right? That sounds right. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. God, that was fun. Thank you so much. It was amazing. I tried my best. Oh, it was absolutely, it was more. It was, it was fantastic. Thank you so much. Okay. Okay, then. Then. You know, when you talked about the people that were standing out in the hot sun and they wanted yeah. and they wanted to know who did this. Yeah. And of course nobody knew because yeah. that's what the underground does. Nobody knows. Right. That's why they're called the underground. But they did put these twenty or thirty Chinese young women that were quite pregnant. Mm -hmm. And they did kill them and they bayoneted them in the belly. I didn't mention that. I didn't mention that to them because I didn't want to they bayoneted uh, young them ladies, you know. So you, honey, he's going to take that and okay. and take. Uh, okay. Now what I've done is I've I, 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 he said I can have it back by Friday because I. I've kind of taped this shut. Uh huh. So um, 
Okay, let's go. Let's go. Let's go to the. Yeah. Papers are in here someplace. Yeah. Oh yeah, there's something to the office. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Okay. It's like, she's 41 years old, she's pretty soon going to be 42. Everything gets recycled, everything gets done the, the proper way. There's nothing that gets, she has this huge thing in her sink where all the scraps go. And she has a compost, three compost piles in the backyard. And if everybody would live like she does, we wouldn't have any pollution or anything. <laughs> It's good. It's good that she's doing it. it is. You know, it's, it's, it's time that we. Well, she's kind of gotten me to. I have got. I, first, I had garbage, and then I had garbage in recycling, and then I had garbage in recycling in newspapers. And now I have a separate recycling, which is for things that the recyclers don't take, like the salad things from the salad bars, because they don't recycle those. Right. And so. <laughs> In Germany, they are very serious about the recycling, and they really force you to do it. They have these three to four different containers, yeah. and you can get it to cover. <laughs> doing it. That's the thing. We're not. Yeah. Yeah. They do not recycle. They don't? Everything, everything in the store that goes in the garbage, goes in the garbage. Mm. Plastic containers go into the trash, I mean, they all, and they all go into a big sheet in the back room. The reason I know is because I work there. Oh. <laughs> and they do not recycle at all. It's too expensive to do. Well, that's it, right? It's, uh... They like the store. The ambiance in the store that you can get, you know, things there that you might not find elsewhere. Mm -hmm. So listen, we are not under any time constraints. Oh, so, no, I leave it on Friday. I mean. Well, I know, but I said but today, right yeah. now, today. Oh, yeah, yeah. We're not under any time constraints. No. We don't have to rush home to be someplace at 2 o'clock or anything like that. No. So, so I just wanted to let you know that, yeah. you know, but he does need that. Yeah, variety, I could it? either. I mean, I could scan it now. Yeah. Should I do that? Okay. Sure, yeah. That. Okay. Good. Then we and don't then have to need um, someplace. Uh, do you want him to not take those tickets off? Or no, no, I won't. I won't take you them know, off. You the, know, the ones with the tickets are the only ones that really interesting. With yeah. the exception, yeah. of course, historically, as you can see, this was written by by Chinese. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, translated. Uh, there are there are pictures in there of the Sassoons and Hadoons and Kaduris who came here and helped to build the, sh the city of Shanghai. Yeah. No, I I, I, I can do it now. If, okay. You know, no, I said I, I I I'd like to take you for lunch. Is that okay if we do this first? Yeah. Of Absolutely. course. Okay. We're not, we're not in any hurry. Okay. okay. And I would different. love to. You know, do you think I could scan that passport of yours? Oh, yeah, right. sure, yeah. of course. Honey, here, yeah. hold this place. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. And I could maybe quickly photocopy the, the book chapters, if that's, okay. if that's possible. Yeah. Uh, yeah, this, this is the Nazi passport that I got to leave the country. There's a Jew in there. Might yeah. interest you. This here is a 
copy of a proposal in the United States Congress to allow refugees from Shanghai to come in here. That's what it was called. That's the copy I got. Uh -huh. I don't know if that's of interest. Oh, yeah. yeah? yeah. Okay. Yeah. This is... This is your entry to, to Shanghai, isn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And this, uh, this is... Uh, uh, in, 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 I had to carry that while I lived in Berlin, June. Uh -huh. and so you would be walking down the street and some Nazi would come up to him and say, yeah. there's somebody in uniform. Yeah. This is... Uh, uh, this picture got taken out when he was in China for some... Yeah, I took that out. Here is this is my mother. A it's a, it's a, it's a, a pass in, in the refugee camp written in, in Chinese. But this I don't think you're interested in, Mr. Himmler, no. These are some of the... This is strictly Europe, Europe here. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I am sure you're not interested. Well, I'm interested, but this okay. is something that, you know, yeah, I, and, and... When you grew up in Germany and you went to elementary school, junior mm -hmm. high, whatever, did you have, were there a high school, did you ever have any Holocaust studies, any kind yeah, of... Yeah, yeah. We went, you know, we visited, uh, uh, we, when we went to Berlin on a school trip and we went to, um, what is it, is it... Nuremberg? Plötzensee. Plötzensee. One, you know, the... Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's they, went to they, they killed yeah. or Dachau yeah. too. Yeah. yeah, I was there too. Yeah, I mean, I visited it yeah. after the war. Yeah. yeah. Okay, we'll wait for you. Okay. Yeah, so don't. I can do that rush. right don't, now. Don't, don't, don't rush that. Oh, thing. I'll make some more tea. How about that? That's good. I like. Tea. Thank you. That would you be. like some green tea now? Sure, some green oolong tea. tea? That would be fine good. also. Yeah. Thank you. Sir. So, and, uh, green tea is healthy for you. Yeah. You see, this is what I will do for my students later today. I will... So. You have become an expert in that. <laughs> well, if you're married to an expert. <laughs> Where is the little teacup? Here it is. So. You know, prior to uh, around the time of the Russian Revolution, many, many Jews fled to um, Shanghai. Mm -hmm. And they became very successful there. And they had a successful Jewish community there. Yeah. They were all pretty well to do. And um, they actually helped a lot when the 18, 19,000 Jews from Europe and, you know, Eastern Europe and so came on. You know that actually um, some of the Jews who went to Shanghai were desperate, really desperate. They were from like the east part of Poland and, and really Eastern Europe. And some of them actually walked to Shanghai, actually walked over the Urals and, and over, you know. Over. From, from Manchuria. It's, Somehow, uh, any, but they walked from Eastern Europe to Shanghai. Yeah. Wow. Uh, I read that in, a, in an interesting book some years ago. And many, many of them died on the way. On the way, yeah, but a lot of them made it there. Wow, that's... That's, that's a schlep. I mean, that's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I also, I read a book uh, a few years ago that was called the Fugu Plan. Oh yeah, oh, he has oh, that. I have that book. Oh, Tokayer, okay. Marvin Tokayer, yeah. Yeah. he's yeah. a rabbi. Yeah. That. Oh yeah. yeah, we've read that. Yeah. That was fascinating. Well, yeah. This yeah. was the plan yeah. that he was talking about. Uh, yeah. You know, with the ships. And wasn't right. that, that wasn't that the Fugu Plan with the ships? No. Well, the that Fugu Plan was different. I mean. Yeah, Tokaya. it was. Well, it was an idea it. of uh, by by certain Japanese and the Japanese government to uh, to give exit visa to European Jews yeah. mm -hmm. and to bring them to Manchuria yeah. and yeah. to let them settle Manchuria and yeah. to let them bring their know-how and capital yeah. and to yeah. give Manchuria basically to them as a, as a place. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, they, were hoping, the they were hoping that they could kill two birds with one stone. They would get very educated people and possibly wealthy people, you know, Jews to mm -hmm. Manchuria and yeah. build up this place. Mm -hmm. 
but also to win over the American Jews, you know, to, to make them, to Jews in America see, well, look what the, Jap the Japanese are doing Did, for the Jews. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. it didn't work out in the didn't end, work out but no. still there was a, a, Jew, uh, a Japanese consul, consul. That's right, who, who saved 2,000 Jews by giving, by giving them visa. Well, it was kind of a, but the thing is, that, you, know, you know, fugu is a fish that uh, will be terribly poisonous. Right. But you can only eat certain little parts of it. That's so why right. they named it that way, because and, uh, it, that's right, it was a because poison plan. Yeah, it was a poison plan. Yeah, there was another. They were, they were going to fool them. Uh, it was my understanding, that, like the fish will fool you. You eat the fish and you die. And the fish is, it tastes good and all, but if you eat the wrong way, it's, it'll fool you and die, and you'll kill, you, you'll die. I'm not sure why it was called fugu. I thought it might have been called fugu because it was absolutely top, top secret. But, you know... Yeah, I, they, they, want, they didn't want anybody to know what they had planned to do. And they named it with that fish for that reason, because nobody would think any plan of it any was, interest. Because it was a sneaky plan, I suppose. Right. What was the name of this famous Scandinavian di diplomat who sent, who served so many Jews? Say, saved so many uh, Jews. Um, I can't remember his name. He gave them... He was a Danish. He was a Danish. Da da I forgot whether Danish or Swedish. I forgot um. his name. Hey, look at that. Isn't that nice? Yeah. Well, thank you, and sir. Do, do you know this? So you, you, you put the... The round one over the little one. Mm -hmm. And then you go like this. Actually, I could do it like that. <laughs> it's that oh, nice. Okay. Oh, my yeah. God. But you've got to hold it tight. Yeah, you, yeah. And you better okay. hold it over the floor instead of over your pants. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No, it's too hot on you. Yeah. Yeah, I, I could do it. Press down. down. Thank you. I'll do it. I can't touch it. It's too hot. Okay. Oh. Mm -hmm. Very nice. And then what you, you do is... You have experience. Yeah. You pull this up, yeah. and then you got to smell it. you got to smell this. Oh. It's a very yeah. flavorful aroma. Yeah. Mm, it is. Yeah. This is beautiful. Is that from, Sh from yeah. Japan? Yeah. It, this is from China. This is from China, yeah. I think it's even from Shanghai. I think I, I bought it in, in, in Shanghai. Okay. Well, so. the, the, the tea idea is pretty much um, the same.